In this webcast, we're gonna solve a general plane motion problem. This is the problem that most of you got wrong, which is rather a simple problem. I think the is issue is that uh, to understand the problem rather than um, the complexity of the problem. So let's see um, how to solve the problem. So the problem says that by, by pressing at point B here downward, um, the thin ring, which is this ring, is given an initial velocity towards this direction, V0, and is having a back spin, uh, omega naught, when the finger is released. Um, determine The problem asks us to determine the distance traveled, so how much this um, uh, thin um, ring will travel forward before it comes to total stop um, due to back spin. So, um, given are the initial velocity v naught and um, back spin or angular velocity omega naught and the uh, uh, friction coefficient, dynamic friction coefficient uk is given, all in variables, no numbers. We have to find the distance traveled uh, by the ring. So, after reading the problem, first thing that comes to our mind is that it's a general plane motion problem since it has a rotation and angular acceleration and it also having a translation in this direction so it has translation t and rotation r so it's a general plane motion problem so, so we may have to use the equation for general plane motions uh, second thing it comes whether we consider force at b or not we're going to talk about that uh, later let's first talk about um, the other thing that we have to know so determine the distance travel distance we're looking for so rectilinear distance traveled we learn those equation in chapter uh, 12 um, to find the travel distance we can use del s equals to initial velocity u ut plus half a t square or v square the final velocity equals to initial velocity square plus twice a s so in either cases we're looking for delta s if we can use this equation or this equation. Now the question comes, should we consider um, the force at point B by the finger? Now before we do that, you, what you can do, you can take a cylinder, maybe a pen or a bottle, uh, put it in your table and press with your finger um, on the edge so that it rotates. You'll see that the w though the bottle is uh, or the cylinder moving forward, it has a spin backward um, and it will come to stop um, the thing is to consider is that the press you are pressing with the finger on the cylinder is causing to motion and when the motion starts your finger is not touched with the cylinder anymore because your finger caused the cylinder to move forward right but during the motion during the initial velocity to travel distance your finger is not constantly touching um, the the cylinder so ask yourself should we consider the force at point F during the motion no right because during the motion you are not constantly putting the force on top of the cylinder simple and another way to look at it is that the problem since um, the thin ring is given an initial velocity so the force is used to get the initial velocity but it's not continuously acting on the on the bottle during motion and it says when the finger is released right so the finger was released when we're considering the motion so what would be the answer? Do, do we consider the force at F at, at point B? The answer is no. So if we don't consider that, it becomes very simple and this of the part is very easy. Now we're going to solve the problem step by step. So our first thought was that it's a general plane motion problem. So how can we apply that? Um, we know for general plane motion in general, we have three equations. Summation of Fx equals to ma which is the acceleration at um, mass center G. And um, since it's having a deceleration, 
or backspin the acceleration direction of ax at point z would be this direction and uh, we can also take a y direction equation uh, though we know there is is zero but we're going to assume that uh, equation and then uh, the third equation for general plane motion is that taking moment about uh, a point here in case we can take it for z so that um, most of the unknowns passing to point z so the moment equation will be easier so these are the three equation for general plane motion we have in our uh, our bucket to use it so we're going to use one by one until we uh, move towards the the solution so we start with our general plane motion equation summation of fx equals to ma if we draw our free body diagram uh, we see the force is acting is the weight downwards mg and then there is a normal um, acting normal force n and it's traveling so it's since it's back spinning and comes to stop so meaning that the acceleration is uh, opposite direction of the velocity that's how it will counteract and then stop so if my velocity is this direction I'm gonna put acceleration in opposite if my angular velocity is this direction I'm gonna put my acceleration opposite because it's coming to an stop so for now I'm gonna assume that the, my acceleration my angular acceleration is this direction and my acceleration is in this direction so there is no other and friction is always acting uh, opposite to the motion direction so I put it in in uh, this direction so if we plug the values uh, for fx we have the uh, friction force which is friction coefficient multiplied by normal n and my acceleration there is nothing else on the body so um, we we need to find n so we know the normal force is normally is equals to mg but when you have acceleration and if you somehow have a y direction motion then n may not be only equals to mg but something else but we can check if we take fy equation if we do that we see there is no acceleration on in this case in y direction since that's zero that gives us normal force equals to mg but just to be careful if you have in some problem uh, motion or acceleration in y direction too also then you will not have the ay zero and then your n could be mg plus something else but in this case zero so we know m equals to n equals to mg if we plug uh, mg here then we can get um, the value of um, acceleration in x direction of z is mu k z once we find the linear uh, acceleration in x direction we can always find the angular acceleration using this formula the linear acceleration equals to angular acceleration plus the multiplied by the radius or you can also find taking moment about point z because we're taking moment about z so that we can cancel out the acceleration and um, so only force will be acting is the friction force so for a moment uh, about z you need to have the friction multiplied by the r which is mu k m z multiplied by, by r and since the all the acceleration moving going through um, point z so if we take moment kinetic moment about point z everything goes to zero but the i alpha um, so for i if you go look at the back of your book uh, the mass moment of inertia i for a thin uh, ring is m r square so we can also find um, alpha using this equation or directly this simple equation in both cases your um, angular acceleration will be mu k z over r you can use either this for format or this equation whatever you, you, you feel comfortable with so once we have found our acceleration in um, and also the angular acceleration and linear acceleration linear acceleration now we have to find the distance we as we talked at the very beginning of the problem there's two way we learn to find distance is del s equals ut plus half t square and v square which in this case will be zero because it's turned to, comes to stop equals to u square the initial velocity and angle uh, linear linear acceleration and distance travel so we can use either of those in this case we're gonna see the both of them um, for this case we don't need um, to find anything else because this goes to zero 
we know u, u is a v naught. We found our acceleration, right, uh, which is mu k z. So we can find delta s from this equation. So if we use this equation, we have v final velocity come to stop, which is zero. Initial velocity v naught is given, and uh, our acceleration is ax, and we have to find ds. If we plug the value of acceleration ax, which is mu k z, what we will be left with um, um, is a uh, mu k z. And notice that we put a negative sign here. Why? Because the v and acceleration is in opposite direction, so you have to put a negative sign. So if we take this part on the other side, and so v square over del s would be 2 mu k z, the value of ax. So this is the answer of travel distance, u squared twice mu k z. Well, in this case, this doesn't match with the answer of your uh, book. I'll show you how, uh, but be sure that this would be the answer of your uh, problem and um, how we're gonna check back with using this equation just uh, hang on a little bit so we're gonna for you for to use this equation we need to find t so now we're gonna find t so to find t what do we have to use that we have not yet used the given angular um, angular velocity omega naught so when it comes to a stop so the final angular velocity would be zero and this is our initial we know the acceleration in previous slide so we need to find t if we plug all those values our t would be omega naught multiplied by r over mu k z since we have found t now we can use the equation del s equals to u t um, plus half z t square notice that we put a negative sign only because it's decelerating so acceleration would be opposite so negative sign so now if we plug back the value of time t into our equation so we'll get this equation form where we have the v naught as the initial velocity time value of the time t and this is the value of our acceleration and again the square of the time if we do that we'll get the velocity or well, travel distance if you solve this equation you'll get this equation well the thing to notice is that del del s of this equation is not as the same as the del s we have found um in in our first slide which is v square over 2 mu k z this is not the same now we'll show actually this those two are the same so this is the value we got using v square equals to u square plus twice a delta s equation right and we found using ut half a d square equation this value of delta s now how they are the same so you know the uh Rectilinear velocity is equals to angular x velocity multiplied by r v equals to omega r. If you replace all this omega r with v naught, right? V naught. You will if you simplify, it will be exactly the same equation. So the travel distance, um, which would be um, the answer of this problem is v v naught is square over two mu k z. Or if you write in this form, where you have um, this this form both are correct but these are basically the same thing so hope you enjoyed solving the problem i suggest that um you go through step by step because i skipped some steps um to uh, so that you better understand the problem and if you have any question always um comment and um, i'll answer or clarify if you if i have to or if i need to or if you need to um but till then um until solving this problem thank you for watching bye